really the traditional way that we are teaching and the way that our education system is set up right now, um, it's, it isn't built to prepare students for the future. But there are many things that we can do to help students. But first we have to understand what this change is. And the biggest, if I could pinpoint what is a major change that is going on in terms of what the industry needs and what students need to be successful, it is that they have to learn to be a leader and not to listen to directions. And unfortunately, our education system is set up so that students from day one are told what to learn, when to learn it, how to learn it, and exactly what they have to do to be able to do it. And this is actually a very big change um, in the industry that we used to be this way. It used to be that people wanted to find students who had a lot of information, they learned exactly what you told them to, and they could follow directions and they were responsible. But that's not how the industry is today. In fact, even more so, it's leaning towards now they're not looking for students that are waiting to be told what to do, which is what we're training them up to do. They want students who have their own mind. They want students who are proactive. They want students who understand what they need to learn without being told. Students that have a creativity on how to apply things in ways that they've never been applied before. And this is new territory, I believe, for the education system. To give you kind of a little bit more context behind this, we need to understand what the change has been. And there's one major change that has been driving all of this, and it's technology. It's artificial intelligence, and it's robotics, and it's the internet. All of this automation, all of this is changing the world drastically second by second. And, you know, just looking at last year, you can, you can see, because the advent of technology, it allowed cryptocurrencies to all of a sudden take over the market. And a lot of people getting into these things like Bitcoin. And the blockchain technology is totally changing the way that businesses are running. But it begins basically with the utilization of technology to help people. We first started automating things so that people would think less. For example, the cockpit. The systems now, the technology behind a pilot allows it so that pilots don't need to know as much. They don't have to keep track of so many things. The technology does it. So it allows the pilots to think less, but still be able to fly very safely. And this isn't only in airplanes. It came to our cars. Because what they're starting to find is that the less people have to think, the less people have to make decisions, the less risk they have. And so in a car, people no longer have to look. They don't have to make a decision on, can I switch lanes? The beeper tells you, right? Because the sensor tells you if someone's in your blind spot. And it minimizes risk. It minimizes accidents and it makes things a lot easier. You can even see the advent of watching movies, renting movies. You no longer have to go anywhere. You no longer have to, to go out of your way, wait, whatever it might be. You get it instantly. You don't have to go anywhere. You can sit in your chair. But things have been changing all around us. Automation not only makes things easier, makes it so you don't have to think as much, makes it so you don't have to make as many decisions. It also eliminates the need for people. And we have been seeing this in every area. There's this huge fight over minim minimum wage, what minimum wage should be. Well, companies, they don't follow the same rules. They see that people want more, they're just going to automate. And you can kind of see this as in grocery stores everywhere. They're automating it, so they're taking the people out of it. And it's not only things like ordering, it's things like driving. These are actually more complex things. They're eliminating the, pe the need for people everywhere. Even in the trucking industry, they're automating the shipping. And you can see that 
This is a very big issue. There are 3.5 million truck drivers that as soon as automated trucks become reliable, they are all out of work. These are 3.5 million drivers that are making over six figures a year. This is going to be a drastic change in society. But it's creating a lot of efficiency. And this is why the rise of Amazon has come, because Amazon took advantage of the technology. And it's even doing things, automating things for even more complex um, jobs in life. Even an air traffic control tower. You can see on the screen, I believe this is a new London uh, air traffic control tower. But the air traffic control tower isn't even there. They're actually looking through cameras in a remote location that needs even less people to, to make sure that the airplanes are, are flying safe. In fact, this is so efficient and, so, and it minimizes the risk by so much because what it's doing is they found out that humans making decisions, humans thinking, humans touching anything causes risk. And so even in China where the labor is cheap, the, China is the number one buyer of robotics. Why? Because they're finding out that even in manufacturing, it's cheaper and it's more efficient and they, they provide a greater service and greater product if they automate the, the manufacturing instead of letting cheap labor do it. There is no job safe here. You can even see that they're now making fully automated kitchens. But if you notice, in this fully automated kitchen, in order to make this work, they needed someone. And what they needed was they needed a really good chef. They needed the chef to design the thing. They needed the chef to know what they had to automate, how they were going to automate it, what needed to happen to cook the food. But you can see, in the automation allows them to service customers even more. If you look up this Crave online, it's an amazing thing. Every time you go into the restaurant, the restaurant remembers everything you've ordered, it allows them to give you ideas on what other people have liked according to your preferences. It eliminates your need to even think about what food you want because it gives you your options. But it's not only things such as, um, such as driving and taking your orders. This is AI is actually targeting and the biggest occupations at risk are white collar jobs. You can see here they have programs that automatically generate articles, writing, which is supposed to be one of the most creative things you, you can do. They have computers being able to do this now. And here, the selection of products, services using metrics, Amazon has been eliminating their analyst and replacing, replacing it with a computer program. Because what they found out is a computer program can actually analyze data 10 times quicker, cheaper, and more accurately. But you can see this in everywhere. There's a film called In the Age of the AI, and it goes over a lot of this. It's an amazing film. Um, you can find it on YouTube uh, for free, but I would highly suggest you look at it. It will give you a very good idea of the change, changes that are happening in the world right now. And they are very massive. It's something that's not really being talk, talked about in the educational sector, but it is coming. 50% of jobs will be automated or semi-automated in the next 12 to 15 years. These are all the jobs that we are training children for. See, because what they found out is that the job market is changing because of technology. And you can kind of see this. You can see the jobs that are increasing are two different types of jobs, really. One is what I call leadership positions, ones that take higher cognitive skills 
social and emotional skills, and the other is techno technological skills, meaning programming. But even programming is going to be minimized because what they're finding is programming can also be automated. So what does this mean? What this means is exactly what's on the screen. Everything we're training students for is being eliminated as an occupation today. You no longer need to know a lot of information. You no longer need to be able to do complex calculations. You no longer, the industry no longer needs someone who is going to wait to be told what to do, right? And this is what we train students to do over their 12 to 18 years in school. They sit in a class and they're told what to do how to do it, when to do it, right? This is not what the industry needs anymore. They no longer need people who are doing manual labor, these little skills. They actually, what they need is they need students that are leaders. And these are the main things, main jobs that will be open in the future. It's the one thing that can't be automated is leadership right now. It's the hardest thing to be automated. Workers that can make things simple, that can utilize the expertise of others, and that are flexible and can quickly change. These are the type of students the industry needs. And we know this because many surveys have gone out and research, um, research efforts have gone out to identify, well, what does the industry think of college grads, of people coming out of high school? And you can kind of see it. 89% of employers think graduates lack critical skills. How is that possible? Right? It's because we're not teaching these students from a young age the right things. Thank you for watching. If you like the video and you want to see more, press the thumbs up button below and subscribe to our channel. And if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and we'll answer them in future videos.